Hi, I'm Ayman. Welcome back to another video in our series of converting our patio to a three-season three season sunny. In this video, we're going to be laying the concrete for the final concrete footing that's going to be under our three-season sunroof. And in our last video, I showed you how to, or I talked about digging the 42-inch deep hole that we need for this concrete footing. And this video, we're actually going to be laying it. So first, before we lay it, I need to discuss what we're going to do. This is how the concrete footing is going to look like. At the bottom, there's going to be some, some, some concrete pillowing out. And in order to do that, we cut out some triangles at the bottom of the pole. Maybe you might be able to see it from here. There are some holes so that the concrete can spill out. And uh, I'm actually going to take it out. That's what the holes look like. And the way after we print, after we pour out the concrete, it's going to spill out here. And it's going to provide sort of that uh, flange that comes out. And next up, we need to make sure that this is straight. So in order to make this straight, we have these two wooden guides here that make sure that this is straight. It doesn't need to be too straight, but it definitely needs to be somewhat level because this is a footing. So it has to be like mostly vertical. Yeah, so uh, as you can see from that, from the bubble, this is level. Uh, I can't get it perfectly because I'm trying to get it on the camera. But we also have this uh, placed in such a weird way compared to this joist. And the reason why is because we want to have two joists that are doubled up because this is going to go under the door. So there's going to be a second joist that goes around here. So we're trying to make this sort of like um, evenly spaced between them. Next up, we need to make sure that these are reinforced. And usually when you reinforce concrete, you use rebar. And the reason I use rebar is because rebar is made of metal. And metal has a lot of uh, um, tensile strength. Whereas uh, concrete has a lot of compression strength. And those are the two opposites, but when you mix them together, they account for each other. So they're, they're, uh, rebar, reinforced concrete is like really strong in comparison to regular concrete and regular metal, just by themselves. So in order to not have to spend money on very expensive rebar, we have some homemade rebar right here. I think this comes from a shelf that we used to have. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to put it in here. And you can see that there are holes on this. We're going to nail it up against the joists. And when we have the second joist, we're going to take our second bar and we're going to nail it to that second joist. And then after that, after we have these all vertical, then we're going to pour the con. And after that, we're going to cut off any of the excess uh, rebar. Another reason that we're putting rebar is so that it doesn't you know, snap, I guess. Because when you have force coming from all the sides, the chance of just concrete by itself snapping is quite high. Uh, but then again, talking about the size of this, this is a 10 inch form tube. Most people actually use eight inches for it, uh, of, of concrete across, but this is actually 10 uh, inches across. So this is a bit more stronger, but just in case we want to reinforce that with some uh, rebar, just to make sure it doesn't snap under all the pressure. All right, I'm gonna let my dad finish up here and I'm actually gonna get the concrete from the garage. So I'm gonna use the wheelbarrow and I'll be right back. All right, so mixing concrete, Pretty simple, pretty easy. If you need to, you can just follow the directions on the back. But, uh, I mean, my dad says it doesn't really matter. As long as it's not too watery and it's not too thick, then it's okay. And we're actually going to do, we're actually going to do this off camera because it's raining right now, so we need to get this done as fast as possible. Alright, so note to all kids mixing concrete, always wear a mask. That's why I brought it at the beginning of the video. I just forgot to put it on doing for the video. But anyway, time to pour some water and start mixing. Where's my shovel? There. Alright, so we have the concrete mixed. By the way, it's all right if it's too watery and we'll get to that in right now. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to put some dry concrete at the bottom. And so I know some people actually put uh, rocks instead. The reason that we're putting dry concrete or rocks at the bottom is because in case the mixture of concrete is too liquidy, if we have dry concrete at the bottom, we're basically containing the entire mixture inside of this tube. Because this form tube provides uh, containment against the outside, as long as we have dry concrete or rocks at the bottom, if the mixture is too liquidy, that's going to be contained by that bottom layer. 
So we already have the concrete at the bottom. I don't need to do it. Just make sure that when you put it, you put the dry concrete on the outside. That's where it's really going to be containing the water. Because when, when the uh, concrete goes down, it's going to push out. So if we have concrete on the outside, that's basically containing it from going outside. Anyway, long-winded long explanation aside, let's put some concrete in. Alright, so we also have the, the rebar nailed in. This one's a bit off to the center of it because we don't want to both, both of the nails to be in the same position because that would be weird. Let's put some of the concrete in. I'm going to use that shovel instead because that one already has concrete on it. So uh, my dad also wanted to mention why we bought the 10 inch uh, concrete instead of the 8 inch even though everyone else uses the 8 inch because of a specific uh, the placement of those uh, concrete footings over there means that half of them are located with the top half covered by the uh, these railroad ties so you can only access about half of the top of the pipe what I mean by this is if you took this Basically, you only have about this much to access. If you have a, an eight inch pipe, you have an even smaller amount of area that you could deposit the concrete into. And since we only we have a big shovel, that means we're losing a lot more concrete when we're trying to put it in. So that means that the 10 inch is much better in our cases. And I guess that the stronger concrete comes with, a, I mean the stronger, the increased strength is an, ad, a, in a, an additional benefit. But the main reason is because it's much easier with a 10 inch than an 8 inch. So I was talking about the form tubes by the way. They're actually uh, very expensive. I didn't expect them to be $15 per 48 inch tube. One of these is $15 which means we bought six of them. That's $90 just for these uh, uh, form tubes. And according to my dad they used to actually cost about $5 per piece which is still insane. But way less than 15. So we're pouring about, um, what's it called? 42 inches of concrete. So these are going to be 42 inches tall. According to Connecticut code, it's actually 36 inches at minimum, but we're going to go a bit more just in case. All right, so we have all the concrete pork at the top. You can see it's a bit watery and that's because we add some water in order to make it a bit more level. I mean, it doesn't really matter that it has to be level because we're going to put more concrete on it anyway. Uh, and also, if it's watery, it doesn't matter because we put that concrete at the bottom to prevent it from going out. And talking more about that concrete, that concrete also prevents this entire thing uh, from going down. And because we have this rebar, it's also going to prevent the concrete from going up when the ground freezes. So I'd say the concrete uh, footings that we have around here are pretty safe and secure and they'll probably last us a very long time. Uh, you might be wondering why I didn't fill it to the top. And that's because after we put the joists, then we're gonna fill it with more concrete. So it's okay if, it's, if there's less. But anyway, I'm Maiwan, and today I, I didn't really show you, but I gave you uh, ideas on how to uh, pour a concrete footing if you wanna convert your patio to a three season sunroom. And I'm Maiwan, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and look at our videos on I&M, especially the videos on, on converting our patio to a three season sunroom, and I'll see you there. But for now, signing out.